Welcome all to our today's webinar together with Gustavo Fedi about the challenges and opportunities for European companies in Argentina. We are very happy to, to have you here, Gustavo, with your, with your years of experience in strategic communication, public affairs, business development. You're a member of the Italian Chamber of Commerce in Argentina. I'm holding postgraduate studies in finance and political communications. And as your college professor, just as today, you are sharing uh, a lot of wealth of knowledge. And I think just to, to mention a few from your, from your positions in your career for the, um, your roles as former secretary of communications and institutional relations at the Argentine Association of Political Consultants your positions at organizations such as Llorente and Cuenca and Urban Grupo de Comunicación. And of course, being a distinguished advisor to the National Congress, local governments, public officials, candidates, unions, and also NGOs. And just the same, we are happy to, to have you here for, for all this knowledge as you're also an editor and writer with background in political and economic journalism for major radio and TV networks. And of course, your participation in organizing electoral debates and covering present presidential campaigns. And of course, your international experience in covering for of coverage of significant summits, such as the Summit of the Americas and the Mercosur Summit. So, as you are a very knowledgeable person about business in, in Argentina, we are very much looking forward to, to learn what you have to share with us about business development in Argentina in the current political and economic setting. Thank you very much, uh, Mario and the entire one Y the IB community. Thank you very much also to those present. Thanks for joining us. Uh, today we'll try to help you answer the questions you are asking yourself, probably, if you are here in this webinar. Is it worth it to invest in Argentina? Why now? Why it's different now than during the Macri's administration between 2015 and 2019? Well, we, to answer these questions, we'll analyze four points. The first one is the political and economic scenario, the, the, the main topics about it. The second one is the challenges yeah, that Javier Millet's administration are, is implementing. The third one is what to expect in the near future. And the fourth is what to do for your business, how to take advantage of this movement in Argentina for your business, company or interest. You see, Javier Millet won the elections in November 2023 with 55% of the votes against the Bernice candidate and Minister of Economy, Sergio Massa. The Millet's proposal were disruptive for recent political history in Argentina. His main idea was to deregulate the economy, removing or limiting the state intervention from economic activities. After about 20 years, more or less, of Bernice in government, with a single four-year intervention by Mauricio Macri between 2015 and 2019, Javier Millet's proposal was positively evaluated by the people who gave him and continue to give him their majority support. The graph you are seeing is the support that Javier Millet, the President Millet, currently has. This support, close to 45%, is in the midst of a strong economic adjustment with the regularization of public services bills an increase in the cost of living and after an infl inflationary shock in December of 25 plus 5% 5 and reaching the interannual inflation global record of 
111%. Despite the strong economic impact is suffering, society is reading that the government measures are well aimed to normalize the economy. This idea is reinforced when, after a sharp increase in representative inflation in December, it fell to 20%, as you could say here, in January, and 15% in February. But what about the foreign policy? Well, Millet won the election saying he will make a radical change in Argentine foreign policy. He promised the United States, Israel, and Europe were going to be Argentine principles allies, despite the relations with China, Brazil, Russia, and the whole BRICS. In terms of comics, the trade, international trade, Argentina recomposed the relations with the IMF. It's trying to get in the OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Argentina is trying to close the agreement between the Mercosur and the European Union. This last point is very difficult to, to reach, but will bring several taxes and another benefits for the European companies and the trade between with Argentina. And it's expected to have some news about it in September or less. On the other hand, the European Chambers of Commerce in Argentina are facing many inquiries from European companies interested in looking against at Argentina in this new political moment. As a member of the Italian Chamber of Commerce, I can attempt that that is happening. And also it's happening in the German Chamber, the French, the Spain, and many other chambers of European countries here in Argentina. A crucial point to improve international relations is the need to normalize international trade. In this regard, there are two objectives beyond the claiming of it. Regularize the balance of international payments gradually, releasing access to dollars to pay for imports. And the second one is to improve local economic con conditions to receive foreign, sorry, improvement local economic conditions to receive foreign direct investments in strategic sectors that Argentina will seek and need to develop. And the world is in need to oil and gas, mining, food, and agribusiness. Local and international finance, financial markets are reacting positively to this Argentine move. Shares of Argentine companies listed in the United States have increased their prices. Also, local stock exchange, the Merval and Bima, and national treasury bonds have grown in these few months. In addition, the country risk fell from 2019 points, sorry, 1019 points in December 2023 to less than 150 in February. To your consideration, as you can see here in this graph, in 2001, the last epic crisis of Argentina, the country risk reached the 7,000 points, and it took four years to make it felt after paying the Argentine international debt with, with the IMF in 2005. You can see here in the graphic, the fall. So which are some of the opportunities, industries and sectors? First of all, we have the mining sector. Argentina has the second lithium reserve in the world. 
this means more or less plus than 20 millions of tons in terms of lithium. They are placed in the northern northwest in the limit with the Cordillera de los Andes in provinces with little development, but a lot of potential and natural and human resources, as well as economic and growth needs. They are Catamarca, Salta, and Jujuy. You can see the Argentine map here, and that's the Northwest. One of mm -hmm. another opportunities here uh, in terms of business in Argentina nowadays is the oil and gas. Argentina has the second shale gas reserve in the world with 802 billion cubic feet of gas. It is only exceeded by China with 1,152 billion. And it's the fourth shale oil reserve in the world with 27 billion barrels of unconventional oil. These reserves are mostly located in the Patagonia region, as you can see here in the graphic, in the area called Vaca Muerta, which covers the provinces of Neuquén, Mendoza, and other regions too. Its development, the development of Vaca Muerta, the oil and gas, it's signed as vital for the country. Of course, we wish to have a time enough to talk about many other opportunities for European companies, such as agribusiness, IT, food, etc. And if you are interested, of course, you can ask me or ask Mario after the webinar. But first of all, we'd like to tell you what are the main changes that Argentina is going through right now. One of the main issues that Javier Millet is facing, is implementing in Argentina, is lower the public and political spending. Javier Millet made campaign in 2023 after just two years of experience in the political field. After that, he was an advisor in economics for many companies in Argentina and abroad. He made campaign in 2023 saying that he will reduce public spending, cut subsidies to public services, reduce unnecessary public works, official advertising to the media and journalists, positions in public offices, and other measures of adjustment. He's carrying out many of them so far. The government's objective is to reduce at first five points in GDP. That's an enormous amount of, of, of percentage of the GDP, in, not just in Argentina, but in any country. The second point, the second big change in Argentina is less state intervention of the country. There was a liberalization of the prices that were being regulated by the national administration in issues such as food, prepaid medicine services, private schools and education, fuels, transportation costs, and many others. The plan of the government is that after a first readjustment and a strong increase in prices, they will stabilize and help lower inflation by more or less July or August. We'll see some information just in, in about 10 minutes. The third point, the third main change in Argentina by, by today is the liberalization of the dollar for comics and in terms, in general terms, liberalization, the, the access to the dollar. The initial economic conscription that took place generated that today the dollar has fallen from 1,250 to 100 pesos. Even though it would probably rise again, the expectations are far from the parity $1, 3,000 pesos that has been projected in 2023. 
in the midst of the campaign. The fourth po point is the control of inflation or inflation control. Let me tell you something. I don't know if you are aware of, but this is the most sensitive point of the Argentine economy today, since the country is at the top of the world inflation rate. We say we we saw just a few slides ago that Argentina has reached the two hundred and eleven percent interannual inflation rate. The expectations managed by the national government are in line with the situation shown before in the presentation. Millet believe that by August, it may be around six points, something that will be a total victory for the Millet administration if it happens. As you can see here, you can see in December, 25% of inflation, 20 in January, 50 in February, the impact of this inflation accumulated in March, raising up the level at 18 points, and then the lower tendons that you can see in April, in May, in June, and July, and in August. This is the official expectations, the official information the government is managing and what is expected to happen in the, in the next the very few months ahead. Which are the upcoming challenges? Well, let me tell you something. This might sound like good and interesting results or or data about economical situation, but there are quite interesting challenges and, and conflict situations here in Argentina that must be considered in terms of business and probability and viability of business, not just the possibilities in terms of mm -hmm. markets or in terms of sectors or industry to develop. The number one, probably you have heard in terms of the many crisis Argentine has passed is the social humor and the, the employment situation. We have already seen some data on the current support of public opinion for Millet and its measures. Other data says that more than half of the public opinion will be willing to wait or give Millet time between six months and two years to show some improvements in terms of economy. That is a lot of support, a lot of time considering the economic adjustment that is taking place here. On the other hand, the IMF projected that the Argentine economy will fall close to 3% this year but will have a rebound by 5% in 2025. The time to invest and enter in Argentina and in any market, in any anything, is when the prices is going down, when it is cheaper and can allow a great profit margin and growth. The second up challenge, upcoming challenge the political position, mainly led by the historic Peronism movement, supported by unions and the most popular sectors of Argentine society, the Argentine political opposition is torn between reaction and opposition in the Millet's measures. His arguments are often supported by his followers, by, but they face a strong contrast with the result that Peronism had in the outgoing government of Alberto Fernandez. Regulatory changes are the third point of the main issues that is going to be interesting for how the Millet's administration has to manage with. The national parliament must support some of the regulations that Millet is trying to carry out. 
However, if the president has the majority support of the citizens, part of the local business community and the international markets and financial system, and even though companies, international and multinational companies, the political opposition will have its possibilities of influence in blocking the reforms, minimize it. And if Millet can show some economic good results in a couple of couple of months, well, you know, probably I'm going to 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 have less influence. Even. It's true that the president Millet doesn't have a kind of uh, an amount of parliaments and deputy and senators according to the changes he's willing he's he's trying to make. But the support of the public opinion is absolutely fundamental. The last point is the international financing. International financing beyond the international credits from the IMF or some other organi international organizations, we consider the dollars that come in from exports, such as those coming from the, the agribusiness. One of Millet's objectives is to lift the exchange rate to allow greater access to the low dollar, and also to find a peso dollar parity, perhaps even dollarized in the economy. Without dollars, that is impossible. But for now, it has managed to ensure that the Argentine Central Bank not only stopped losing reserves, but had added plus than $9,000 million in this free month of his administration since December. That's an enormous amount of dollars for the Argentine reserves. It is expected that between April and May, Argentine agribusiness will generate income in dollars of nearly $20 billion, so $20,000 billion in terms of exports. And that's uh, most of the international finance that we were talking about. But perhaps this is not your first time looking at Argentina. And perhaps you wonder what is the difference, and if it is a difference between these ideas of Javier Mirey and the ones that carry out Mauricio Macri in 2015 and 2019. Well, let me tell you something, and that is the clue about why now and what's the difference. We have four points in favor of Mirey, at least so far or by now. <laughs> the number one is the support of citizenship. While public opinion majority agrees, Millet will be able to continue with its reforms, tending towards the path and will allow to generate a fiscal and commercial surplus. Something very, very difficult um, that Mauricio Macri never reached. The substrate. The second point is society, nor the Argentine political class, are the same mo are at the same moment as in two thousand fifteen. Ten years ago, it was approximately uh, twelve years ago. Sorry, down from a model that was going to a different place from the economic perspective. Feminism had the resources, it was a strong, and its followers had very fresh the benefits that had received. Today, the situation is radically different. There is a social disenchantment with the result of the last feminism government, and there is tiredness with the traditional leading class. That's why Malay came up the last year and got elected as president. The third point is that Malay has the Macri's experience in the national administration. In 2015, when Peronism left the government, 
Cristina Fernández de Kirchner left the government until 2019, Mauricio Macri didn't know how far he could advance with the social guarantee. Will it be feasible to cut subsidies, raise rates, or generate a radical change like the one Milais is implementing? As we said, in 2015, the society, the Argentine society, was in another one. Today, Milay knows that it has the margin, but at the same time, that it has to show fast results or signs of going on a path of improvement of the economy. Even if Argentina had to go through a moment of deep recession, like nowadays. And the fourth point is the fast economic changes Millet is implementing. Unlike what Mauricio Macri did, Millet moved quickly with radical changes, such as the lower public expenditure and cutouts. Those are clear signs for the public opinion in terms of what he said who do if he get elected. So, what can you do for your business in this regard? What can you do if you are interested in do something here in Argentina, some business you are interested? Well, we have some ideas. First of all, don't waste time. Contact the local professional and officials to deeper about opportunities and check the viability of the project for your business. That is absolutely fundamental because nowadays, Argentina, in the middle of this recession, in the middle of this contract of his economy, is absolutely cheaper than in probably a few months ahead. The second point you can, you should be pay attention is to the chambers of commerce that are good channels to get in contact because they have information about your, your country, the historical track record between the comics, between Argentina and your country, but also the chambers and organizations, the professional organizations and of companies of any sector, such as oil and gas, mining, or IT, or maybe, uh, I don't know, the food sector, or maybe, I don't know, many other uh, sectors and industry. All of them are good. Of course, we suggest to seek personalized and professional support at local level beyond official channels. If you did your research, if you are willing to know a little bit more or just to know the viability of who said about your job, your business, the probabilities that this is going to, to work, you must contact personalized and professional support at local level. It will have complementary, complementary a realistic looks like the one we tried to share here. That's all, Mario, and, uh, and, and all of you. I don't know if you have any questions about this this webinar. Uh, in my regard, thank you for 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 your attendance. I stop sharing the. Here I am. Hello. Thank you so much, Gustavo, for the for the insights. I think we already have some some first questions waiting. Um, Claudine, I'm not sure if you wanted to ask a question. Yes, please. Uh, thank you so much, Gustavo, for the for the presentation. Really enjoyed it. Um, my name is Clory. I'm the corporate affairs officer at Canning House. Uh, we're the leading forum for promoting business relations uh, between the UK and Latin America. We're based here in London, um, and I definitely share a profound interest in Argentina. I've lived there and I've worked there. Uh, support the efforts that you're making to kind of draw attention to the business opportunities in Argentina in the mid to long term, but also um, talking about some of the short term challenges in, in a kind of pragmatic and realistic way. Um, I just had a few comments 
some areas that we might be able to dig deeper. Obviously, there have been some some recent gains in terms of the Malay administration. We've seen a dollar blue, as you mentioned, Gustavo, uh, actually reach 990. So I think it's the first time that it's been under 1000 uh, in the last three months. So that's positive. We're expecting inflation, as as you gave us the predictions, to reach 18% in March before it starts to descend. Mm -hmm. And although Gustavo mentioned that there's been a lot of support and people have been gritting their teeth and committing at least to six months to two years, you said, to kind of see if this government bears fruits. Um, I'm perhaps slightly less optimistic about that point, um, given that in March, that's the time when people start to return to school in the Southern Hemisphere to work. Um, and soon people will need to turn on their heating with less energy subsidies. I'm not quite so sure that people will be able to put up with uh, with such a high inflation in the month of March. And I think that may be, may be a turning point. Um, but more importantly, you spoke about the mining opportunities and Argentina's unique position in terms of its natural resources. thought that was really interesting. My question here is, how is Malay going to negotiate with the provincial governors, right, um, to make sure that these mining projects gain traction? We can see in many provinces, for example, Mendoza, uh, there is a decree whereby you cannot process minerals within the territory of the province, right? And Malay will be meeting with the provincial governors over the next day or two, I believe. So how do you feel that this process in mining is going to push ahead? How is the Malay uh, administration going to work with provincial governors to ensure that um, Argentina is able to fulfil its potential as um, a global energy leader? Thank you. You see, <clears throat> President Millet is in the middle of battle uh, with all the governors. Uh, it doesn't matter if they are of the same party or the same uh, political life, because uh, what we are, uh, what we have here in Argentina today is that uh, there is a change of political uh, game. We could say we could say the governors were used to. Um, dealing and negotiate a little a little bit more with the depending on the, the national governments and now I think as you probably know but uh, the, the the natural resources are from the, the provinces so they have the, the possibility of uh, adjust their local regulatory situations of course they are not going to, to pass through some regulatory changes if the society, doesn't want it so, but I think that the critical economical situation of some provinces in terms of a budget, in terms of what the national government sends every local state is enough argument to pay attention and to reevaluate every situation, not just in Mendoza, as you mentioned, but in, as we said, because in Mendoza, some other provinces, more in Patagonia have this uh, have an idea the society there have the idea of the uh, sustainability they are against the minor development because of the damage to the to the to the habit to say so probably what you have uh, we probably are going to see in, are more um, independent uh, position about the governments, uh, even because, in fact, that's what Millet said. We have a, a, a not um, in terms of um, constitution. Argentina is a federal country, but in terms economical terms, Argentina is not quite federal. So President Millet won the election saying also that he wanted a federal country. So probably we are going to see more independence in terms of what government will do and in terms of readequating their local uh, regulatory affairs, their possibilities of take uh, advantage of the natural um, resources they have uh, 
on, on in this in every provinces. But this is not uh, something that happens just in Mendoza. You can say the same in Catamarca. You can say the same in Jujuy and in Salta, where the lithium reserves is mainly uh, of, uh, of this kind. So I think that probably, uh, sorry, I think that probably that's something that we are going to see the battle between the governors and the president is between how they manage to get the budget to to pay the, the, the official budget to pay the official uh, wages and uh, how can they how can they face the the public works and so on so as president Millet decided to cut some many many uh, expenditures about the, the national government in terms not just national but in terms of local and, and provinces yeah. probably they are going to the governors are going to 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 manage to to get their budgets so i think that's something that we are going to see within the very few months ahead in fact they are we have something that is called uh, Pacto de Mayo mm -hmm. May agreement. We could say something like that. That is, the president called all the governors to to, to meet in one of the Argentine provinces in Cordoba to make a kind of. It is not a new constitution, but a new agreement between all of the, the governors or of the uh, provinces of Argentina in terms of fiscal uh, surplus and the, the the way they are wasting their budgets. So. I think that's an interesting thing we are going to face. That's really interesting um, to find out about those kind of sub-national dynamics. Um, Absolutely. And I do have a second question, but I want to give other people a chance to, to chip in as well. Okay. Let's see if anyone wants to ask something else. Or... Yeah, hi, Gustavo. Um, first hi, of you. all, I can only confirm what you've uh, mentioned at the beginning about the increased interest from the uh, current uh, government from Argentina about global cooperation. Right now, or precisely exactly today, the German State uh, Secretary Franziska Brandner is in Buenos Aires meeting with uh, political representatives of the new government in order to deepen the cooperation between Germany and Argentina in the fields of trade, raw materials, and renewable energies. And you've also mentioned some other uh, important sectors like mining, like oil and gas, and agro-business. My question is, uh, the German accelerator opened its first office also in Buenos Aires in, uh, during these days, promoting cooperation in Latin America and boosting the growth of German startups in the region. So they basically want to empower German startups to scale globally and they are financed by the German government. So my question is, do you think that Buenos Aires can become the new Silicon Valley of Latin America? Or in other words, that the new government right now is beneficial for startups? I think that, I think no, I, I know that Argentina, particularly Buenos Aires is, uh, has such many conditions in terms of the IT resources, IT knowledge, because probably in terms of what, um, universities, the, the educational level, um, combined with the uh, economic necessity in terms of what um, here professionals and, and, and the company must know, must do, are used to do for, for uh, try to do their best with the budgets, with every year budgets. Uh, a few decades ago, the Argentine or Cyrus particularly was, uh, and I, I know this by 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 my experience, uh, even though uh, Argentine Buenos Aires was, I think, one of the, you could say, I don't know, 2000, 2010, uh, that's a decade, uh, Buenos Aires was one of the main points in which the startups were settling to in terms of a kind of a sandbox and uh, to prove if the system were well were going to 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 be successful um in terms of uh, on the other hand in terms of the internal consumption levels so 
it was I, I worked for uh, some companies like Uber and Globo. Maybe you you, you know them. Uh, they came to Buenos Aires to prove if the system were strong enough to go to other countries in in Latin America. So I think these. Uh, and in fact, I, I don't know if you are aware of, but Argentina is, the I think, the second or the third country in the region with most uh, unicorns uh, generated in this country. Um, in fact, one of them is Mercado Libre. Probably you have heard about it. Mercado Libre has been the, the, it's the most uh, important company in the story of Argentina, none of any other company has reached the the levels of Mercado Libre. So I think the possibilities are um, of those uh, variables I mentioned, I think that there is possibility. I don't know, painfully, I think that there is two or three problems that we have. First of all, we have a, as, as a neighbor of Brazil, Brazil, in terms of quantity of uh, unicorns um, markets, uh, the, the size of markets is uh, bigger than Argentina. Uh, 20 years ago, that is not that, that far. Uh, it wasn't that way because Argentina has another kind of uh, possibilities. But I think there is probably to have here in Argentina a lot of possibilities to, to install startups to prove if it is a possibility of uh, have a, have an MVP, have a, an experience uh, ex, ex, experience that works, show proof if, if the system works, and then yeah, to to take to to, to another level, to the next level. Uh, even though because here in Argentina you have, as I had, I, I said, um, maybe there is challenge in terms of re uh, regulatory affairs and regulations. Uh, the dollars, the, the access to the dollars and some other points, but in terms of the human resources, the educational level of the people, the the, the language level of the people, the, the the knowledge in terms, in general terms of being competitive in terms of international terms are very high. So I think that probably could be a very interesting uh, sandbox here in Buenos Aires. Um, in addition to this, uh, Buenos Aires is uh, with the whole crypto uh, wave. Uh, Buenos Aires is one of the the, the crypto uh, capital in, in the world. I think is in the top ten capitals in terms of uh, achievement and buying. Uh, and that's something that is because of the weak the weakness of the peso in terms of the any other stronger uh, currencies such as dollar or euro but also in terms of educational possibilities that the people has in terms, not just in terms of technology, but in terms of uh, economy knowledge. Uh, we are here very aware, we are here very, um, we read we read every day, not all the people of course, but I think that is very interesting, the kind of uh, the amount of people, the professionals that every day read the, the newspaper or the news about how is how are the market here in Argentina, which are the possibilities to to invest in um, the the financial uh, variables are follow it well follow with it. I I say I could say diary follow it. Uh, there is not something that you read when you are trying. Well, probably uh, a senior person, but uh, at very young stage of uh, the professional start investing. Uh, so that is very interesting. That is something that probably Mercado Libre with uh, all the um, educational um, finance education that gave the possibilities, that gave the, the accessibility to invest in uh, you know, different kind of uh, possibilities, not just uh, buying dollars or investing in, in, in real estate, but other kind of, of possibilities and, um, and sectors. I think it's very interesting. Uh, 
uh, probably Argentina, ha Argentina has many, many conditions to, to make that. Um, in terms of Germany and the European co countries, I think one of the main uh, strong points is that we have a cultural, cultural uh, like a song, we could say, uh, have a strong, uh, not just because many of us are uh, descendants of uh, Germans or for Spain or Italian or many other countries, but in terms of how we do business, the international trade, bilateral trade between some of the countries we are speaking about with Argentina are from, I don't know, has, I don't know, 2000, uh, sorry, 200 years of experience, but probably at least 100. So I think that this is something interesting in this new moment, new political economic moment of Argentina. Thank you. So I would give back the word to, to Glory for her second question. And if there's further ones, then just perhaps in the chat, just write a short note and then we'll go in the order of, of the, the notes in the chat. Great. Okay. Um, so thank you for allowing me to have a second question. This is my final <laughs> question, I do promise. Um, so, I, so I do agree, you know, that in on the whole, the business community has been quite pro in favor of the Millet administration and there has been a sense of optimism but there has have been some points right of conditions or negotiation which I just want to delve into so obviously the devaluation of the peso back in December was favorable um, to exporters of soybean wine etc because they can get more pesos for every dollar that they earn right um, but there's been some resistance I, I've seen at least within the wine industry of the proposal to increase import taxes, because you might be able to export your wine and therefore earn more pesos for every dollar, but you need to import cork, you need to import machinery, you need to import barrels. Um, obviously the omnibus law has gone back to the drawing board now. So how do you see that this point of taxation of imports, where's this going to go? What's this dynamic of negotiation going to be like between the Malay administration and the business community, uh, notably the agribusiness sector? Thank you. I think that uh, that's a very interesting issue because, of course, as we, we said before, we didn't have much time to speak about all of the issues, all of the points that are interesting for anyone interested in doing business with Argentina or in Argentina. But uh, the thing about how is going Millet to manage the, the, the mood of this taxes about importation? I think the import, I think is going to follow probably the necessity of um, get more uh, dollars. It is that simple, complicated for Argentina like that. Of course, as he said that he were going to deregulate the economy, uh, that it's something that it is important to know. Um, and I think it's the main critics he is getting from the local uh, uh, SMEs from uh, here in Argentina, because uh, the, that kind of barrels are uh, where going. They were used to have that kind of barrels. So the, the ones, the the business man or, or company that wants to import something, some, you know, some tools and some, some, some machinery uh, need to pay that. So it, it wasn't uh, competitive. And that was in, in order to, in terms at least, that was what the, what the Bernism said in terms of protecting the, the local economy. And it is probably one of the main factors, but Yesterday was uh, it took place uh, one of the main uh, meetings in the, in the agribusiness field here in Argentina. One of the main topics was okay, we can export the the or liquidate the, the 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 production, the local production we have, but we want no taxes uh, for that. And I think I don't know. Theoretically, he he will probably or he should 
take those taxes out. Um, in that regard, it's interesting to have, a, well, I, I don't know, I think you are from UK, isn't it, Glory? Okay, I don't know if it applies to you, but um, Argentina, Brazil, the whole Mercosur is trying to, uh, to close the agreement with the, the, the European Union. And that is interesting because some of the taxes you are mentioned you are mentioning are included in that kind of agreement. And one of the the, the ideas that Millet said the whole liberalism uh, administration has is that if we make that kind of uh, agreement, we are going to have less taxes. So the, the money and the trade, international trade is going to be more fluent. So that is going to make to improve the economy in general terms. I think that we are going to probably see that is one of another battle that here in Argentina is, going, is, is taking place is between if the local economy or the main uh, economy is aimed to the international trading of the local trading. I think that that is one of, another point, a different point of view that Millet has in regard of Mauricio Macri, because probably is is kind of the main behind the curtains in this this government administration too. But Mauricio Macri, I mean, no. But um, when he was president, he didn't have the the opportunity. He didn't change that much. So that this change in terms of local consumption, local economy, and international economy is going to be a, diff, a very different difficult because. More than the fifty percent of the look, the Argentine economy is moved by SMEs. So uh, these uh, these companies are not all the sectors, but uh, some sector tax that is inventory on some food and some you know uh, micro um, mechanical companies such like that probably are not going to have the opportunity of being competitive in terms in international level so the impact that change of the how economy how our Argentine economy works probably we are going to have another chapter that is what happens with with the unions what happens with the employment levels and what happened with the, 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 that kind of recession? What is going to happen with the social humor? That is something that you were, you were mentioned before. Uh, if this happens, is if this is has no end. I tell you something. I the, the, the week ago a week ago I I have a meeting with uh, with a client and that I have that is a businessman here in Argentina that has many several units. Uh, several units. One of them is for uh, trabaja, uh, sorry, works the cuero, the the the, the leather. Sorry, <laughs> makes a lot of this. Um, the the leather from from many animals. And I asked him, do you think that uh, we are at the bottom, or we could fall a little bit more? No, Gustavo, we are uh, we we are not uh, up yet there yet. We have um, some couple of months uh, first, and then yeah, then we are going to have the B uh, effect. I don't know if that that idea, you know it, but and I think that is something that has impact a couple of months ahead. So probably we are going to see some signs of improvement of the economy, but the people won't feel it because they are going to be, we are going to be in a different mood because the situation is different because the macro economy works in a, in a different level than the micro economy. So that is something that all the uh, analysts are, are following because the, the, the social impact and the political capacity of the national administration are going to be evaluated in that regard. 
what happens with the people that have no money, not even to buy food, not just to go on holidays or to change their cars? What happens with that kind of people? I don't know if you have, you know, but uh, here in Argentina, probably, uh, yes, but I don't know the rest of you. Probably Argentina has the 60% of their childhood poverty. So that is an enormous amount of, of childhood, of child here in Argentina. We can't, and I think it's one of the, the reasons to why Belay has an opportunity this, in this moment. As an opportunity because people in general terms uh, didn't want it, didn't want anymore the, 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 the leader class that were that, that were um, administrating the, the government, the national economy. So the people wanted another thing. Now, probably there are, I don't know what percentage, but many of them that probably are saying, I don't know, I wanted to change. I don't know if this, this is the change I wanted. But I'm going to give him some, a little bit time, a little bit more time because we gave the other ones more time than a couple of months. So if that idea, that uh, projections, that, that that perspective, official perspective of the inflation uh, that the government has and manage uh, comes true or more or less, maybe not in July or in August, but I, in October or November, I think probably we are going, we are facing some really, really new moments and opportunity in Argentine economy, and not just Argentine economy for, for itself, but for companies to come here or to trade for. I I know that um, both the international uh, direct investment here in Argentina the, the, the year before, the, the last year was poor, in 2022 was even poorer. poorer. Um, that's that's obviously that if any company has many, many um, blocks to to do their, their job, their business here in Argentina, they are not going to think about uh, uh, investing in Argentina um, to, to, to respond to the last question, no problem, Clary. To the question, to close the, the, respond, the, the answer to the question to, to Clary, I think that those taxes are not going to be anymore in Argentina. Of course, it depends on the industry, it depends on the sector, it depends on the kind of, uh, of, uh, of commerce, but probably are going to see less of that kind of taxes. Thank you, Gustavo. Perhaps also I have, have another question to you. Um, also, as we're also already coming to the closing the hour, perhaps some, some closing words afterwards. And um, European Union and Mercosur, also a never ending story. How do you see the, let's say the Millet administration have a positive impact on on finalizing perfect this never ending project? I think they are willing to do it. Um, I don't know who is connected, but as a member of the uh, Italian Chamber of Commerce, I know that uh, President Millet was an Italian, was, was, uh, has a meeting with uh, Giorgia Meloni, uh, not just the Pope Francis, that is Argentine. <laughs> but I know that there is there are some difficulties with in terms of what the European Union, France, and some other countries didn't want to happen in terms of import uh, from here, from Argentina, from from Brazil, and from many other countries. But I think that the because I know that the European Union are, are going to have some elections this year too by June. Uh, I think probably are going to, to, to have to expect until September to see some some news about it, because I think the the national administrations, the national administration of Javier Milei, 
is is working all that it ha that, that that can be possible to do in three months, of course. But I know that Argentina has been um, diffi very difficult to 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 international trade. But I think that the country has many conditions to to to, to uh, on, on interest from many companies from many countries abroad, particularly in Europe, in terms of cultural legacy, in terms of historical trade, in terms of what the how all the, their economies complement each other. So I think that Argentina has many possibilities. I think that the, the thing is to find the point where to to get the agreement to be done. Um I think that probably they are going to 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 do it. I don't know if in terms of a uh, regional market or in terms of bilateral transactions, but I think that Argentina is already doing it, but uh, I think that probably are going to be more possibilities of trading, of international trading with Argentina with more benefits for the countries, with, with more benefits for many companies. In fact, I know because I had some, some contacts in there that, for instance, it is not a European, but I think it's it was the, the, the example. Amazon is working for opening office, offices here in Argentina, a market here in Argentina, and it's something that it was not possible a few months ago. Uh, the Tesla owner, sorry, I missed the name. Is Elon uh, Musk. Elon Musk also talk with uh, not just uh, investor funds, investment funds, but companies like, uh, um, oh, I missed the name too, but there, he has a company that offers uh, inter international uh, sat satellite internet. Uh, he's, he has already opened it and start uh, working here in Argentina. So I think many companies are expecting um are not just waiting but act, but activating uh, how they can uh, settle here in Argentina um get in contact we get in contact with the officials uh, are, are making their moves and that's why we recommended before that it, the people who want who thinks that they maybe have something to do with the kind of Argentine markets or or as in a unit, or maybe want to import something from Argentina or complement their businesses here too, or as, as Tobias mentioned, some sandbox experience here in Buenos Aires with a startup or IT a company. I think it's probably more, it's going to be wiser to do it between today and July or August when the economy probably get the bottom and the inflation rates go down uh, at levels that Argentina didn't see for the last I don't know <laughs> the last time we we see a we see a, a lower inflation a low inflation such as a one digit we, we say here in Argentina I don't know lower than 10 percent a month it's incredible but it is the truth so that's why we we, we advise that it is important to, to speak with the people at the local uh, levels too, because they are going to, to tell you something uh, wider and complementary information are going to be to get it to be delivered besides the official information. And I think, uh, and I say this as an advisor of companies, I work uh, uh, for many companies here in Argentina and abroad, and I see that kind of change of mood, that ex expectations about this is the opportunity. It's now or never, because as we said before, when Macri get 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 elected in 2015, it was another country, it was another society. Um, Argentina gets a attention get get a lot of attention from many many companies in the main countries uh, was president of the G20 uh, um the, the annual meeting took place here I was an organizer 
of it. Uh, it was uh, an interesting move um, and a positioning for the country, but Argentina couldn't make it sustainable. So I think that uh, the, the the problems that then came after that probably generate the, the possibilities that we have today. Uh, because uh, probably we are going to see, in fact, immigration, more immigration the, the very next month here, not uh, years of course in Argentina, because probably the economy not just are going to improve, but has such many conditions, Argentina, and it just need to align all of the, the the ideas. It is not easy, of course. The unions are going, not just the unions, but all the 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 local power, the local political unions, and of course some local companies are not willing to 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 take this change, the radical change, as as, as if it's nothing, of course. But I think. Argentina is an, an historical opportunity, and that's why why we 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 consider it will be a good idea to do to do this webinar. So, if I don't know if there is any other question, but it's, but I'm I'm in place to 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 answer it. Good good closing words also from your side, Gustavo. This historic opportunity in in Argentina. A warm welcome also to the people who are here to, to contact us for a follow-up conversation. I think there's so much to discuss about business opportunities in Argentina, how to implement it. So please feel free to reach out to Tobias, Gustavo, myself, so we can organize something. Thank you very much, Gustavo, for, for all these valuable and quite interesting information of today. And yeah, we will be looking forward to, to have follow-up conversations with the ones who are interested in it. Thank you. You're welcome, Mario, and the whole that join us. Uh, thank you, the one IB community too. Thank you. So we are closing this webinar for today and looking forward to, to be in contact quite soon. Thank you to all of you. Thank you very much.